And we're live on the twitch.tv slash the Asuma. On a Sunday morning. I've been on my feet all morning doing stuff, going for a walk. Let's turn this thing off. I, uh, I've made myself a decaf coffee. Mmm. Mmm. Gonna enjoy that immediately today. So you're gonna hear lots of sippage. Talbar, Forgill, the Thinky, Stefan RBK, thank you for the bananas in the chat. Lets me know that we're live. Are we all set up and good to go? Have I turned on all the things that are supposed to be turned on? I believe I have. I believe we're good. <sighs> Rat Poison says, Hello X, long time fan. Haven't caught a stream in years. Nice to be back. Good to have you back, my dude. Welcome back. Oh, that is some good. It's the last of my decaf. I've got to order some more. So Corallus, that sweetheart, has been over here uh, helping me out with the collection of the bones. I'm going to leave all of these here because I think this is enough to finish our project today. In fact, I've got a whole bunch in here too. So let's take uh, an extra shulker box. Uh, we get, we're going to finish up the ribcage. That is the plan, right? So we've got all of that there. Then we've got uh, all of my items in here. Let's go see what we can do with all of that, right? Got to equip some of this. Uh, put all the things back where they normally go. Aha! Uh -huh. We're going to need some of that on hand. Dang, alright. Here we go, we're going to go finish the ribcage. Can't wait to show you what I've done, but I also really want to drink this coffee. So. Hello, do plays. Thank you for two months of support. Hope you have some nice TV today. Today, I have coffee. It's really hot. I have the coffee served way, way hotter than I do tea. It's good. <laughs> that animation's beautiful. Uh, McDaddy says, I'm exploring Season 8 at the moment. Cool, are you doing that on our uh, server that we have set up for that? I forget the IP. Is May School here? May School will tell us. Oh, that's so good. Mm. The decaf isn't as nice as the regular thing. Uh, just because my coffee grinder, like, the other day it went super, super fine. And today I ground it up and it was... Uh, more mixed. Uh, 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 gosh, the frames. What was that noise, eh? I've heard this is the best, uh, this is the place for Hermitcraft's best ribs, says Wrigley Fox. Best ribs in all of Hermitcraft right here. I, uh, I made some ribs the other day. I had some, some ribs with potato salad and uh, corn on the cob, which I hadn't had corn on the cob in. No, maybe since I was a child, like it was really nice. I actually really like corn on the cob. The the ribs are fantastic. Haven't had ribs in a long time, and uh, the potato salad was so nice that I've made some more since. What is your favourite Metallica album? It's definitely Light the Lightning. Oh gosh, that album's so good. Oh man. Hmm. And my door just opened itself. It does that when it, it gets drafty sometimes, and it manages to open itself. I'm just going to leave it be. It's almost like it's almost like there's a presence in the house. That presence is just the wind. Yeah, if you've ever been freaked out by a door like opening itself, it's probably just a draft. Like um, like you got a window open here, you got a window open there, and it has the power to gently open a door. Right, um, okay, so, ribcage update, as you can see we've got the schematic on, so we're good to place blocks, right, in the correct spots, uh, what we don't have on is this right now, which I have been using a bit, it's, it puts quite a lot on the screen, I'll probably leave it off for a while, if we, uh, if we do this, you will see that on this side, I've come down here, and greatly expanded the ribcage downwards. We still have 
this little bit down here to do kind of really getting there then these little bits and then on this side you'll notice that it's pretty much all done right so when we talk about getting the rib cage done I'm not talking about the removal of the stone anymore it's just uh, the rib cage itself being built and then tomorrow Monday I may just do a hermit self in hermit so I may ask for some help and go anyone want to help me you know finish this project off by digging out all of the stones so we might be back with another one tomorrow X voice is very low volume uh, oh right hang on is it normal now let me know in chat if I now sound louder huh okay I'm sure we experimented with this the other day and it didn't work so like can, is the music no longer you can't hear it anymore right or can you still hear the music let me know can you hear the music you got you got to put music in the in the message now otherwise I don't know what it is because so many yeses and noes already you can still hear the music that's so weird so I, I'll have to look into that then this is what we experimented with the other day. The sliders didn't actually affect the volume you could hear. It affected the volume I could hear. Really, really odd. But apparently, if the slider is a, if the slider's on my voice, it will change it. So if I do, if I start doing this, then I get quiet, all right? And then you, oh god, you can barely hear me. I don't know why that thing works that way. This is. Uh, this is what everyone says about getting a Go XLR or a mixer is once you start creating a more complex audio matrix, it'll it'll just mess you up so many times. Mmm. Mmm, this is some good tea. I'm gonna finish it off before we get going here. Good tea, good coffee, what am I on about? What am I on about? Matter tat tat 24 thank you ever so much for 15 months of support. I enjoy supporting you. Keep up the great work. Thank you, my dude. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but the um, slider just wasn't at full tilt. Which, so it's mechanical. When you press the mute button, it like slides all the way up. For some reason, it didn't. Don't know why. Whatevs, bruv, whatevs. Is what we say. Here in the UK, maybe. I don't know, it rhymed. Verizon Amiga, 35 months. Thank you so much. Dragos 1, 2 months. Greatly appreciated. Apparently today is Father's Day, is it? That's not something we really uh, celebrate in my family, those sorts of things. Apparently they're just invented holidays to sell, to sell, uh, what are those old things? Cards. That's it. Cards. God. Couldn't even remember what they were called. They're so old fashioned. Also, I've got a feeling it's different in like different parts of the world, like especially the States. It always feels like there's Mother's Day is different in the States. I say feels because I, someone says it to me in chat and then I'm always caught off guard like, oh, is it? Wasn't that just a few weeks ago for us? Something like that. For Father's Day in Germany was a while ago already, says Four Gil. There you go. So like different, different days in different countries. Gosh. So confusing. How do we keep up? September in Australia for Father's Day. Wow, there you go. Big difference. Mm. God, I'm letting that coffee set on. I can just feel like a soft burp here and there. No, no, no. Hold it down. You're streaming. Be a professional. How long will I be streaming for today, says Paladu Plays. My usual two hours. Uh, however, like if this thing's like done 
sooner. Depends depends then on what, what else is on my list of to do's. I know there was I know there's a couple of interesting things on there. But it's just been like ah oh, ribcage, ribcage, ribcage. You know? Could start a little bit of work on the whole sorting system. I wanted to do for so long some uh, creative streams for 1.19 as well. What is this reverse paleontology, says Rifty be back. That's a good one. Reverse paleontology. We're putting the bones in the ground. Pashki, thank you ever so much for eight months of support, my dude. Much appreciated. Hope you're uh, entertained this Sunday morning. Gonna watch a movie later today. I, uh, I had plans. Plans have been cancelled. So I've got more time on my hands and the knowledge of finishing off the rib cage because I yesterday I spent all day instead of doing what I was originally going to do just grinding out this rib cage trying to get it done. Since learned that we might actually have after all that like Madoka for 1.19 but now we're sort of in the home stretch I'm just thinking let's get this thing done. We're almost there now. And it did not take as many hours as I thought it would. That's for sure. Right, I'm going to try and get this one wrong. Wrong? What did I just say? Yeah. What did I just say? I'm going to try and get this one right. Aristomo. Thank you for 22 months. Also, Canuck 1987. Gifting subs. Appreciate it, my dude. Babble works. Cecil for it. Umbriffy. Buzz120. Exanti Fuchs. Y'all been gifted subs? Be sure to say thanks in the chat. We always appreciate the gifting of the subs. And uh, thank you again, Canuck, for supporting our community. You know what that needs? It needs an animation. Hey, Asuma, what would you do if you had admin powers in real life and Hermitcraft was real? <laughs> if I had real life admin powers? I'd probably, I'd probably, st the first thing I would do, I'm pretty sure, is order everything on the menu at a curry house and give myself the ability to continuously eat it without feeling uncomfortable or, or, uh, you know, full or, or like any of the, any of the calories, nope, free eating and I'm just going to sit there and eat until I'm bored. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Like, how long do you have to eat until you're bored? If you're like me and you have the, the endless belly problem. <laughs> he would prune the world, says Talbot. Oh, God. That sounds uh, slightly problematic. I mean, yeah, the, the first thing I think of is, like, selfish. It's like, I'm going to eat. Then maybe later, maybe not not too far after that, right? I'll be eating. I'll be thinking I could use these powers for good in the world, you know? We could uh, just magically create utopia with admin powers, or could we? Would there be would there be consequences to my actions? Unforeseen consequences. Let's feed everyone. I don't know what the consequence to that is. Maybe all this free food. People are like, well. I ain't going to work tomorrow now. Be like, why? Because you can just magic it into existence, X. We don't need to go to work. And I go, hang on a minute. You're putting quite the burden on me here. I am a bit of a derp. I might misuse these powers at some point. Jeez, I don't know. Seesaw 4, it says eating is good. Of course it is. You'd die if you didn't eat. You know, eating is sustenance. It is life. Chelsea, 4733, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate it. Hope you're uh, enjoying the stream on a Sunday morning. Listening to some old sorcery today. It's been a while. And I thought, you know, the ribcage kind of a spooky place. We will have some spooky music today. Post-scarcity problems, says Rifty be back. 
Yeah, yeah, post-scarcity problems. What on earth are they? What will they look like, eh? Hmm, what is Asuma doing today, says Hostarian? I am finishing the ribcage. Fabby1809, thank you for using your Amazon Prime on me. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Hope you're uh, entertaining, enjoying the stream. I am also hoping, although 1.19 is around the corner, so I might do more Hermit Craft with that. I'm hoping to do some variety games again soon. I, uh, I got sent a couple of games, and uh, one of them I wanted to uh, stream. Hey, Asuma, has anyone ever leaked the IP even with the server whitelisted? It's common because of potential traffic, right? Yeah, it's happened plenty of times. It's just something you got to deal with. We even had uh, a mod made once because the game would crash in a way where it would show the IP when it crashed. So then we had to make a mod that obf obf obfuscated... Oh, that word is brutal. Uh, that basically, like, hided that. Hided that? Hidden? Hid that? Words? English? Please? Hello? What? Are you planning to play City Skylines again, says Buzzbitch? Um, I... I, uh, I I really do like that game. It's been a while since I've had an itch for it, but every now and then I do get an itch for it. At this point, I really feel like like seeing it a sequel to it would be really great. Like that game is you know eight or nine years old now, right? And I think although it might seem a bit soon, because I mean it was a gorgeous looking game, it'd be hard to. Imagine, I guess, it really needing it, but in my mind now, it's like, it's been around for a long time. Maybe maybe there's like a, a sequel in the works. Maybe it's worth holding out for that. Like updated graphics, better systems in the game to work with and stuff. I don't know. Do you know Dwarf Fortress? I do know that game. I checked it out a long time ago. It semi looked interesting, but it was a bit too old school. Like the graphics were very 1980s, <laughs> if I remember correctly, if I'm thinking of the right game. It's just a little below my, the appeal bar for me. Like, I can appreciate minimalist graphics and stuff, and. Um, pixel art and all of that, but I feel like there's just like you just needs to just needs to give you a level of immersion, and those kind of graphics don't offer me that. Maybe if I played, maybe if I was a bit older and I played games like that in the 80s, I'd have a bit of nostalgia, a bit more fondness for it. But uh, sadly, no, it doesn't quite work for me that that level of graphics. Is this on the server, says Hysterian? No, we're not on the Hermitcraft server. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. I just I just wanted to deceive you. Canuck, more gifted subs coming in. Thank you ever so much, my dude. Appreciate it again. Thank you for supporting our community here. If you're here, your name being read out loud, be sure to say thanks in that chat. Uh, Beetlejuice FX. Terra DB. Yuki Tanuki. Idiot's Range, Love Purple Poodle, Lemon Panda, Vet Chris, Percival97, Dino Daniel, Mind the Tiberium, Delverac, Hryzax, <laughs> these names, eh? Heels Drawns, Skycast, Smug7, Yelbin Gifted Subs by Canuck. Thank you again, Canuck. If you heard your name being read out loud, be sure to say thanks in the chat. We uh, greatly appreciate it, as always. By the way, the custom axe looks amazing, says Taubar. Yeah, it's uh it's not it's not the last of of custom things we're gonna see that let me say that. Glad you like the look of it. It's uh, it does look really awesome, doesn't it? How is the weather in the UK? 
It is mild today. Yesterday, uh, you know, the day before yesterday, Friday, heat wave, right? Baking hot. Hottest day so far this year. And then very quickly, you know, yesterday was a cold, rainy day. And today's pretty mild as well. You know, every, every year... Uh, actually, not every year. When I moved into this house... And I was working through the summer for the first time. Uh, the, the, the nature of this house just meant it can get pretty uncomfortable in here on hot days. And I was considering getting an AC unit, but I didn't really want to contribute to, uh, you know, global warming issues the way that AC units do. And then I kind of realized, like, it's actually, it's, a, it's quite a, a short period here in the summer where it gets really unbearable. You might have a week of that kind of weather tops. And most of the year, like, you are not going to need the AC. And I just decided it's, I, it feels like, you know, it's just a little bit here and there. And if I'm going to give myself more free time, flex time or whatever with this YouTube thing, maybe on those days just don't be in here on the computer if it's that bad. And it's not a lot. It's not a lot of days in a year that it's like that. So, uh... Yeah, I was just thinking about that again. Because now it's like, what? We're like the sixth month into the year. Okay? Like, July, August, September tend to be maybe the hottest months in, in England. So that's three months. And realistically, it's going to rain. At some point, like it'll, it'll be like a couple of weeks tops that it is actually unbearable in this room. So, so I'm good without me AC. Right now, I think what I need to do is just uh, drop this thing. See, down at the bottom here, we kind of want to make sure we build a fair bit of it because we're going to be putting lots of black concrete between the bottom parts. So, they need to be uh, fully built out, I guess, is what I'm saying. So I'll put a few extra bones here and there. I also need to put the occasional torch down here now that I think about it. Torches are important. Why not get a water cooler then? That just... a water cooler? That just cools water. What, what, how would that help? I shaved off all my hair yesterday since it was so hot, says Talbot. Yeah, I tend to uh, cut the hair shorter in these in these summer months. Do these bits here as well. Just get a mist fan, says Mistro. I, I don't like the idea of a mist fan in a room with computers and electronics. I, I don't understand people saying, like, just do this, just do that, when I've told you my conclusion. My conclusion is, it's it's actually quite a short amount of time. Like, when you're in it, it's easy to think, oh, I need an AC in here, right? Then you think, hang on a minute, like, this is only a few weeks a year it gets this bad. I can do other stuff with that time, so... I mean, even then, like, we're not talking the whole day, we're talking, like... Like the, like maybe one o'clock onwards is when like the sun is then on this side of the house and it starts to get real hot. So I can just shift, you know, what I'm doing with my daily patterns a little bit. Get up a bit earlier. You know, get on the computer quicker. Just change it around and make it work. How does the schematic work? Well, the schematic works sort of like you're seeing it, right? It creates ghost blocks in the world of uh, what you're trying to build. Gives you a guidance where to put things. People giving you these cheap solutions when your solution is already cheap as it gets. Free. Yeah, exactly. It's like I've already sussed it out. <laughs> I've already sussed it out. Don't worry about it. I've also got um, a couple of fans, so if it gets really unbearable and I need to do something, I could put a fan in the room. But yeah, I just I just think it, it's like it's actually like a really small amount of time, 
and it's just not worth it. And uh, I've been looking at houses. I've been thinking about moving for quite some time. I kind of moved here knowing I didn't want to stay here forever. But I've been looking a bit more frequently as of late. And uh, one of the things that constantly comes into mind. I'm like, if I go look at this house, I've got to remember. Super important. Um, like, to think about where the sun rises. And where it, where it falls. Because... Like, that affects the heating of a house. Throughout the year, throughout the day. Like, there's all these little dynamics that you don't think about. Like, it might... You might look at a house and be thinking, like, is there more floor space? Is there this or that? I'm looking at houses and thinking, like... Things like, um... I don't know, there's all these little things that you do. And... Oh, there's just... There's many things to factor when you look at housing, right? But, uh... It's a case of like picturing how your days plan out and then little details like where the sun rises and falls is actually, you know, kind of uh, kind of a big deal because it changes which rooms in the house are hot or what time of day. So, you know, if I I don't wanna I don't wanna have the sun shining on my workroom in the evenings again, right? It'll be potentially the other way around this time. Although you want your bedroom to be um, on the cooler side of the house in the evening too. But yeah, those, those are all little factors, and there's other there's other stuff that like I, I want to get that probably no one thinks of, but like I have a space in my house. I can walk from one room to the next in a circle. Now, this might sound a little silly, but um, one of the habits I've developed is like when I'm on the phone texting or taking a call or whatever. I just pace, I just start to walk. And uh, it just means I'm a little more active in my day. And so in the layout of a house, I'd also be looking for the opportunity to, you know, a layout that just facilitates you being able to pace about a bit when you're on the on the phone. And a lot of the houses I'm looking at don't actually have that. Don't have that kind of layout. My par parents finished building their house that they've been working on for 10 years or more. That's the solution, says the thinky. I've looked into the building your own house stuff and the problem for me is that like it involves a lot of hands-on work and you know, you take in charge in areas that I am completely incompetent at and reading on what to do feel like a lot of the reading material sort of feels like it's not telling you every step because it can't and, and so it seems kind of vague as to where to do and so then I've been looking for like you know how like you would contact some builders to build an extension it's like are there companies that just like help you do the whole thing you know they talk about how like the more you do yourself you'll save money but a lot of these things that you do yourself are things I can't do. I'm not an electrician. I don't know. There were just so many elements of it where it was like, yeah, I don't know how this works. I don't know what this is. Also, like, trying to buy land, it's really weird. Like, there's different ways of buying land. Some of it's like plots are really cheap. And then other ones, they're like the price of a house. And I'm just like, don't know if I'm doing the right thing here, looking at the right stuff. It's, uh... Yeah, it's been an interesting bit of research to do, building your own house. I was really keen on the idea. But now now I just I look at houses at the moment in an area that I'm considering moving to. And like hoping to find the right thing. There's a couple of houses I want to go check out at some point. Need to sort that out. But uh, I'm, not in, I'm not in like a rush to move. It's more just like, you know, keep looking and maybe that little dream house will pop up at some point. I'm looking for a house in Rome. It's driving me crazy, says Percival. Rome is a beautiful place. Dang. Yeah, I imagine uh, living there would be something. As much as I dislike the suburbs, it does give you the liberty to plant trees in your yard to shade your house, says Jarachar. There's that, yeah. 
I've, n I've never lived in a city, and I don't think it's what the direction I want to go in, but, like, it would be nice to, like, experience that. See, I like I like nature too much. Everywhere I'm looking at moving to is just closer to nature. More, more green fields, more blue skies. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Ha! You can see how close we are to finishing this thing now, right? It's starting to get hazardous. I might fall to my death if I'm not careful. A uh, little miss court. Thank you ever so much for three months of support. And stir one two three four is here for two months, saying love this channel, man. I've always loved your hermit craft vids, and this is the first stream I've caught in a while. You're doing great. Thank you, my dude. Appreciate the words of encouragement. Glad you enjoy uh, what we do over here. See, so, yeah, I'm not looking to pop down into that area just yet, but it's somewhere we're gonna have to go, obviously. And then, like. Building the ribcage becomes a whole different thing at that point. Because it will no longer be the ribs, really, will it? Mine the Tiberium says, You know, as a creator, you always see the mistakes rather than the things you got right. It would be costly mistake. It would be a costly mistake to make building your own house. Uh, I both agree and disagree with that. Like... I get what you're saying, but I don't think... Hmm. I don't think you can conclude that it would be a mistake to build your own house just because if you're the one creating it, you see the flaws in it. Like, there's flaws in my house that I'm in right now, right? Things where I'm like, oh, I wish this were like that. I wish this room were bigger. I wish, you know, that wasn't there. This wasn't laid out like that. But it's out of my control, I guess. I'm here now. So I think about it differently. I think you just need to be aware of that psychological difference. That you may end up thinking about it a little different because it's, you know, your your creation. But with it being your creation, it's probably going to end up being, you know, way more close to how you want it to be. Which is the whole point, right? So, now nah, I, I feel like, yeah, you're going to have a critical eye, right? But get to think of all of that in advance so you get to you get to make many more things right than will be wrong have you considered renovating your house to make the layout fit better says curls if if i if i had a known like if i had a crystal ball to see the future and then i go back in time and do something different with buying the house i think one of the first things i would have done was looked into getting an extension and maybe changing one or two things. But this still wouldn't be like a permanent, permanent home. But I definitely could have actually got an extension, I think, and improved the layout considerably. And it, it just doesn't feel right to do that now because I'm, I'm looking to get out of here before long. Feels like it's time to move on to a new chapter. Well, plenty of people build their own cars, or rather start from a rusted out hill as a project car, says Faravis Gaming. Yeah, uh, not so many people build their own houses though, but... Th for me, the big thing was like, I guess we're building a car, right? Like, if all of a sudden I developed a passion and wanted to build my own car... I feel like a car is just full of, like, components. Things that you can buy, tinker with with your tools put together, you're going to be reading manuals, learning instructions and stuff, whereas the housing thing kind of goes into like a legal area, right? Like you've got to legally buy a plot of land, then get planning permission, and it's these sorts of processes that seem very uh, um and ah, you know, like, ooh, how's that work? Like, and then it's kind of hard to get some, I guess, con concrete information on it, and then you've got things in the back of your mind like, well, what if you buy some land and then you can't get the permission to build on it? Like, what happens then? Uh, that, that's been that's been the extent of my researching. More of like, feels like you've just 
sort of understand what's supposed to be done, but you're just left with a lot of questions about how that actually plays out. Right, I think we are in need now of another little bit of camera account action. So, yeah, you can see effectively I can get in some more blocks. Uh, it looks like here, actually, I've missed. Yeah, I need to come back up here and probably tidy out that space. Uh, then I, I reckon the rest of this is pretty darn good. And then on that side, it was done, yeah, excellent. So I think, yeah, let's get a little bit more of that there and this here, and then we're ready for the next bit. Wow, so close. How am I actually going to get up here? It's just this space here, really. Taco Man the Great, thank you for using your Amazon Prime on me. Appreciate it, my dude. Also, 34 months for Tanny Glace. Thank you, Tanny. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Let's get some water in me. My uh, voice is feeling a bit... <clears throat> a bit rusty this morning. The Finky says, oh yeah, the legal side can be challenging, but some places are much stricter and headachey than others. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe I need to look for an angle on how to like research how it works in an area, maybe. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know what the thing the thing is. It's obvious when it's presented to you, but that might be it. Maybe what I need to do is start reading into how different areas handle it, and then you might find Oh look. You know, the local council have this website where they give you guidelines and you can submit in theory. You don't have to own the land first. I don't know. You know, I, I have to poke around more. <sighs> Planning your house in Minecraft is actually genius, says Mr. Xpex. I, I would say that it's a smart idea, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't translate to a proper blueprint slash layout you got to remember that like the walls that you would build with blocks would be a meter by a meter obviously you can build at different scales but um yeah maybe there's a scale that is actually pretty good the thing that i would recommend is uh learning sketchup i used google sketchup uh a long time ago i actually used it at one point to measure my room and then and then design a desk like that's fitted to the room for my old setup. That was uh, that was a pretty good use of that. But yes, uh, with a program like SketchUp, you can make probably plans and layouts that are readily translatable to actual blueprints. Now that may not mean you know like one to one. An architect will probably have to do a lot with it. But essentially, you know, you can create shapes rooms, layouts, floors that are way more workable than I think Minecraft would be. So if you did want to use a program, a something to design, you know, you could do that. I might, hmm, <laughs> might uh, start, I got this vision of a house in my head. I, I would really enjoy that actually. I would really enjoy that. I reckon that would be a really fun little project to start doing. Trying to get the vision in my head onto something. Maybe that would then help motivate me as well. Then it'd be like, wow, I can start to see it. I, that's, I think that's a, What do you think, chat? Do you think that's a great idea? Why do art architects not use Minecraft more often, says Sir Jemin? Because I think you'll find Minecraft is more of a introduction to architecture, right? Like, it's, it's a place where interest in architecture can can sort of manifest. You can show your interest in it. But it's not a proper tool. So architects will be using proper tools for architecture. Whereas young people who who are thinking about their future, what might they go study at school, etc. Like that's that's a better place to use Minecraft and architecture, you know, together. Before you get to all the, the technical stuff, the the proper end of it. You could always plan it in The Sims, says the Mr. Joke. Mr. Joker was here. I played Sims 1 and 2 a long time ago when I was a kid. And I loved building houses in it. I, I kind of immediately would think, well, you've got those like one meter by one meter block limitations, right? 
I think SketchUp is a great place for me to start because I'm already familiar with the program. I'm actually making this note now, I, I think. It would be just a nice exercise to do. There is a house design 3D game on Steam. I downloaded it to plan the terrace for my parents' house. I'll, um, I'll have a look into that. Yeah, if someone's gamified it, you know, I used SketchUp like over 10 years ago, so, it, you know, chances are there's better things around now, right? Like, yeah. Okay, so we have, uh, we've pretty much done as much as we, oh, I'm just going to fill that in like that, as much as we can do without going down into this bottom area, which poses the question, how do I want to handle building this blob? Uh, we can certainly build the front, but then the sides become a little bit more of a case of... In fact, how much of this... Okay, we need some free cam here. So, we've got to th consider that the bottom of this thing is going to be like a bowl of black concrete that goes out to each of the areas. Then when it comes to this bit here, probably going to have it sort of come down you know you don't you, like the way it's going to be lit up you're not going to see the edges of any walls and stuff like that so i really don't think it actually makes much sense to go lower than this because the black concrete is going to go from there over to here you could argue that maybe i want to see this little bit that pokes off the side but i don't think it's going to make that big a di i i would actually say i think that's good. Like, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I, I could start putting in some black concrete around the edges, like we've done up here. That's the thing that needs to be done. Ah, look at that. I can see a little bit higher. All right, yeah, I made up my mind. I don't think building down here makes much sense, so uh, we shall not do that. Okay, so what we will do is head up here. Let me out. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, black concrete. But I think the first thing we need to do is probably work on our light levels. Okay, right. So I need to take a trip to my glow lichen farm, get tons of glow lichen, and then come back here and kind of cover everything. That would be a, a next phase. Then it would be the black concrete behind everything. Okay, we've got a plan. You might want to check out Builder Simulator on Steam. You can plan full houses with many floors. The the type of home I've been picturing in my head. I don't know I don't know what era of building it is. Like it's easy to say modern because you look at stuff and think it's new, but modern is like an actual era and art movement in time. So I don't think calling it modern but I like uh, I like these houses that have a bit more of a sort of squarish, not square, like rectangle shape, and they have those big glass glass walls essentially. I don't want a crazy amount of that, but I like this idea of having this this sort of could almost express it with um, oh yeah, this is uh, this is not spoilers anymore over here, is it? So we can get rid of this. Beautiful sounds. So satisfying. Yeah, I could almost express it with Minecraft blocks, right? Like, I, I like this idea of having this sort of living room area with glass across these two sides, sort of looking out into a garden. Then here... You've got like the kitchen, utility area. Doesn't have big glass windows on it. So this side here, you're going to have like a gym area. It's going to be like one big open living room, but I'd use the back half for a gym. That's going to have a big glass thing. Um, then, I don't know, like... See, this is why you need to think about it. You need to think about all the different rooms. But like, I don't know, maybe like a utility cupboard with like a, a washing machine refrigerator, that kind of thing, back here, a um, couple more rooms, so yeah, you've got this like rectangle shape, now, 
this room here, I like the idea of it being really tall. And so you have like like a really nice big open sort of lookout into nature experience. And then somewhere back here you'd have stairs going up to the second floor. And so that would become like a balcony like there would almost be a balcony for whatever's here. That you could look out into this space down onto the living room. And then you would have um like all of these would be like rooms. So like stairs in the middle perhaps. A room here, a room there, a room in the corner. I don't know. Something like that. But with that corner being like big and open with these big glass windows looking out into um, like the garden area. That kind of thing. And also on the bottom floor I designed it so there would be a loop. So you could go from the kitchen to the living room through the gym. Like to the back of the house and then walk all the way back through again for that pacing that I was talking about. Yeah. Would this be in nature or in town, says Sam? I I, I want to try and get a bit of land that's just like away from everything. So yeah, out in the countryside, hopefully. Vaulted ceilings are lovely for views, says Seesaw for it. Vaulted ceiling, is that what it's called, eh? Bowling alley! Ah! <laughs> Oh, uh, what would be, i tell you what, right, um, last year on holiday we had a hot tub, used it every day. If you had your own hot tub, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't use it every day. I think the one thing, yeah, we got to go for all the, like, luxury things people have in their house, okay? I'm not having a bowling alley, that's ridiculous. The one thing I think I would actually benefit from is having a sauna. Oh, those curls saying sauna for sure. <laughs> like, the the benefits of going to a sauna on a regular basis, like I did when I went on skiing, was amazing. I, I totally, totally think it's, uh... At least, at least on, on the... <clears throat> I don't know how to finish the sentence, because I don't know what on earth I was saying. <laughs> I, I just think a sauna would be great, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, I think all I've got to do... Oh, yeah, no, this requires me doing something as well. So, if I remember correctly, I want I actually ended up needing to use regular shears. Oh, we should pick up some iron while we're over here. Regular shears ended up being the gig. You should build a rock wall in your kitchen in case you get bored. <laughs> Rock climbing's uh, an interesting hobby. I think I would uh, enjoy it. If that, we did discuss doing some rock climbing a while back. I don't know ever what happened to that. Uh, yeah, I, I want to do some rock climbing at some point. Looks like a fun activity. Hot tub must be the most useless part of a house, says Curls of Doom. Well, the hot tub, it's a very relaxing, fun thing, but it's just. It's just something, you know, you do on occasion or on a hobby for me. Whoops. Oh, that got rid of the seed. Dang it. Absolute dang it. Ah! Oh, there's not even any in there. Where's my glow liking at? Where am I going to get some from? I know someone will use it for decorating. Go on, Scar. You use glow liking for decorating everywhere, don't you? Isn't that how this works? Oh, God. Oh! I thought that's how this works. Wait, this isn't this isn't the pranked tree anymore, is it? This is, like, actually a pink tree. Huh. Where have I used glow like in? It's right there. Oh! Was it, like, in front of me and I didn't notice? At your dreadland floor. Oh! Now I know what you're getting at. Yes, we put some on the ground in this area. Oh, God. Ah, oh, it's right here. Dreadlands. Welcome to the dreadlands. I've not heard it called that before. <laughs> deadland, even. It's the deadlands now.
Thank you. This time, don't place torches everywhere. Okay, so when you do it like this, you pick up, yeah, you pick up quite a bit at once. Definitely get a sauna. Here in Finland, it's not even a luxury since every house has one. We use our four to five times a week and I love it. Yeah, I mean, the effects of it are so beneficial, right? Like, it's not common here in the UK, but I definitely would consider getting one. I also have no idea how on the luxury scale a sauna is. Like, what's special about the room, right? I imagine... I imagine it needs some proper... I, I would say insulation. I guess, you know, you're insulating the sauna from the rest of the house. So you don't want a, a sauna in your house that just makes everything else hot too. So I'm guessing they probably have to be built with some sort of consideration for how the walls are. Let's get a bunch of that in here. Convert your shed into a sauna, says Baitan Daniel. I don't have a shed. I have to say, X and a sauna are two things that not go together in my brain, says Paul Girl. Really? After all the health and fitness I talk about. Like, so I, I would probably go in a sauna four days a week, right? On the day of my workouts, or my uh, main workouts, after I've done both of them, sauna time. Or maybe in the evening. Actually, I'd probably look into when's the best time to go into a sauna. Like, what's the research on it? The sauna just seems too static, says Talbar. As opposed to sitting at a computer playing a computer game. That's not... St I don't do anything static. I'm not, I'm not very static right now. You know, I'm actually dancing. You can't see it. I should probably switch to uh, standing in a minute. Finnish people have saunas literally in their wooden cottages. There are sauna units you can buy and put in your house. It's not that complicated. You see, I heard about... Oh my god, okay. Sauna unit. I'm doing all the research today. I heard I heard about, like, pop-up saunas that you can, like, put in your house. Like, sauna kits that you can tr travel around with. Now, they, they, they seemed like more portable things that you could also then go and put in your home. That's uh, that's not quite what I I mean. What I heard about them was that they weren't very good as well. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't think much of that. But yeah, maybe maybe it is relatively easy to convert some space. I don't. I'm pretty sure I don't have a space to convert. Maybe the garage. That's full of junk at the moment. Hmm. Went to Finland once and tried sauna snow sauna, which was extremely nice. Yeah, hot cold therapy. Yeah, so along with the sauna, I like the idea of having a uh, a cold tub as well, right? Basically a bath. I don't know how they get it cold if you just uh, have a bag of ice you chuck in or something, but uh, those two things. Okay, so what are we doing? Glow lighting? Yeah, we're lighting. We're we're getting it all prepped, all prepped and lit up properly. It's actually going to be a complete pain because uh, I should have done this as I gone along. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I love the sauna then hot tub combo after my workouts when I used to do them at the YMCA. It was brilliant, says Stella Gaming. Yeah, they really are saunas. I seriously cannot imagine how a sauna could be remotely enjoyable. I feel like rubbish when the bathroom gets too condensed during a shower. Um, well, maybe your tolerance to heat is something that needs to be challenged. I mean, I enjoy a bit of discomfort because discomfort is usually temporary. And the result of engaging with discomfort is usually you feel more comfortable with what's normal and regular. So, 
when I go into a sauna, the enjoyable thing is how it all feels different. That heat relaxes your muscles and stuff. It's definitely like, there's definitely an element of discomfort at the same time, right? That's part of the, that's part of the deal. Ah, look at that. We need to put something just over there. So yeah, it's like if if you're I don't know, like you don't have a cold shower because you want to be cold all the time, and you don't get in a sauna because you want to feel baking hot all the time. It's a temporary experience, and there are health benefits to it. Okay, so we've got something up there, up there, and here. Oh, quite a bit there. So I keep going up for a minute. Do you have to to shower after since you get sweaty? Says nonsense. Yes. Yeah. You uh, you generally go from the sauna to having a cold shower. This is what I did on holiday, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Okay, there's a bit over to the side there, and then there's a bit round the back. Hmm. Yeah, that bit over there. Uh -huh. Oh no, it was over there, was it? Got it! Then we're going over here. Apparently that's as far as I can get. Where was it again? Oh, right up there. Hmm. It's kind of weird when you switch between the two. Get a little disoriented. Okay, I feel like... Do that, and then slap one in that space. Cool. Ah, we've got another one over there. See, this is why I should have done this better, like, all the way through. Should have maintained it as I went. Hmm. Yo, oh, pro skills. Pro skills. And it is... Oh, it's above us. Right, so... Hmm. Oh, yeah, can just about reach that one. Right, nothing's spawning there then, is it? So this bit over here will fill in with black concrete. I think I feel like I'll do that now. And then all of the right hand side above the stone is kind of done. Although we've got some torches to deal with. So let's do a little bit of black concrete. Boop. Away it goes. So the thing with scaffolding is you just kind of like let it fall down. You lose some of it. Whatever. It's cheap. It's easy. Randy Nicole. Is here for 86 months. Thank you, Randy. Greatly appreciated. Togoro Joe is here for 44. And Twivels79 has raided us. Thank you again for another raid, Twivels. Greatly appreciated. Welcome all the raiders. I've been a little bit engrossed with what's going on on the screen. I wasn't paying full attention, but thank you so much. Let's have a little bit more water here as well. That coffee flavor is lingering. The Finky says... So I sit outside the boiling summer heat for 10 minutes to get the same effect. That doesn't sound very pleasant, to be honest. I'm a person who prefers being too cold than too hot. Uh, it'd have to be really hot outside for you to get the same effect as a sauna, I believe. But yeah, I, I mean... Like I said before, the thinky, just... Uh, if ever the opportunity comes up to go in a sauna, just embrace it a little. Like, go for it and, uh, you know, in, try and enjoy the discomfort, which might sound a bit strange, but, like, it's just a different type of experience. And, uh, and hopefully you'll feel the benefits after doing it. Okay, so over here, we need to put some of this to use, right? 
and I look at where the borders are. I might. Hmm. I was thinking of uh, using the schematic again, but probably don't need to. So yeah, all of that you can see will be this stuff. I don't care too much for filling in every little gap, but I, I am kind of wondering, will, you know, leaving these pockets of space that mobs can spawn in become a problem later on? My whole mob farming area is sort of not even close to this space, so... Tell you what, once you actually get a few of these blocks in, you just realise how much simpler this is. Um, do I want more bone here as well? Need to get this hot bar configured. So we go there and then here. And then maybe dum 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 on there. Uh, actually all of that. Yeah, there you go. Um, just put a bone there, I guess. Or that. I think I feel that. Mm. <laughs> no one will ever know, but yeah. Next, so I was wondering what your thoughts are with these buy now, pay later schemes that some companies are offering. It seems very, to be very prominent in SEA countries and will probably grow in popularity since it's rumoured that Apple will offer it as well. I mean, pay now... Buy now, pay later is not a new thing. It's been around for a long time. I don't know what SEA countries are, and I don't know what you mean by Apple are offering it. Like, buying Apple phones and not paying for them has been a thing in this country since forever. Like, when you buy a contract or sign up for a contract with uh, Vodafone or whoever, you know, like, they give you this super expensive phone and then you pay for it with your contract over many years. Um, you can, there are all sorts of like buy now, pay later schemes when you want to buy furniture or, or whatever. Furniture tends to be a very common one for it for some reason. This, this is what I actually don't, what I'm doing right now is kind of what I think I don't actually need to do. Because you never really see it. So like I could go straight up on that bit. But I'll probably go like that. In fact I've kind of already marked it out. Oh, Yeah actually I don't know. <laughs> I need to stop talking about it. And just talk about something else. Just put the blocks in. That's all you need to do. Overthinking it. Put that there. Ha! There you go. See now, now I've left a spot where a mob can spawn. So will they? Yeah. Anyway, we need to stick to the plan a little bit more rather than doing this. Don't know why I started doing that up there. So the plan is to find the spots that need lighting up. So I think now what we'll do is we'll drop into this space, and we need to punch out the torches that are nearby. So that we can kind of look at this thing. Hmm. Need to look at it a little different. Oh, I'm definitely going to end up leaving like pockets of uh, space where mobs can spawn if I'm not careful. Uh, cloves and cars, people are saying. Yeah, for the buy, buy now, pay later. The, the way the way I would do it is if, hmm, let's see. Like, first of all, you shouldn't really like buy anything you can't afford. So the trap is that it's easy to think that future you will figure it out and sort it out and la la la, and it'll be all right. I mean, that's why they offer these things because then they can put up crazy premiums when people don't aren't able to make the payment right so that that shows you that people actually do fail to make these payments i think i'm going to uh keep this on for now otherwise it wouldn't work it's like gambling it's like gambling is about 
like tapping into the psychology of you thinking that you're smarter than all the odds, but like mathematically, like it wouldn't work if people beat the system. So odds are you're going to lose at gambling. That's why it exists that way. So when they offer up this all buy now, pay later stuff, it's because people can't make those payments and therefore you know they make the money they need to make that system work right like they wouldn't they wouldn't do that without it being profitable so the profit is in that some people don't make the payments and then they get to charge you a crazy amount of money for it so i guess like rule number 1 here uh you know be incredibly considerate on when and how you're going to use it now i think if you've actually got the money already in the bank and the math just happens to work out right there are occasions where it would probably be all right to use it. I I was it happened to me like either earlier this year or last year. I was signing up for something or buying something, and it had one of those sort of like pay over various months schemes. And I was I crunched the numbers a little bit, and I was like, it's actually cheaper if I do that, and I know that I can pay it. So if you it, like. If you crunch the numbers and you find there's a cheap deal and it's like, oh, you can actually afford this, then maybe in those circumstances it's worth um, it's worth going for, right? But the, the, the trick is you need to make sure you have the money now and uh, not just think, oh, future me will deal with this because that's a recipe to get in trouble. Some things are so expensive that you need the buy now, pay later, says Awkward Potato. I wouldn't think about it like that. I would really think of it in terms of like, you know, when you make buying decisions and financial decisions, make sure you absolutely can follow through with them. Consider that your circumstances might change, etc. I talked about um, using credit cards before, right? I think a lot of people think of credit cards as like the same thing. Buy now, pay later, uh, which is what I do with credit cards. But I don't ever buy anything that I can't afford. So all I'm doing by using the credit card is essentially leveraging the money that's in the bank to pay for these things to sit there for an extra month and earn a tiny bit of little little bit of interest, which might sound a bit I don't know pointless or whatever. That's fine. Um, but it's little habits, it's habits. It's like building, you know, the habit of working out every day and and then over time, you know, your physique changes. It's sort of like building habits like that just with money. You develop the habit of using the credit card. You never spend more than you can actually pay off. Then you, you've already got the money for it in the bank, that kind of thing. And then... And then it just means that every time you use the credit card, you're just holding on to that money for a little bit longer and the bank gives you that little bit of interest on it. Sure, it's probably pennies, but if you do that for the next 30 years, you know, it adds up, doesn't it? So it's just like a habit worth getting into. So that's, that's what these schemes are like. They're like a credit card, right? So if you've got the money in the bank and you can afford it, then, I, then I'd say, like, as long as you crunch the numbers and you're on top of it, maybe uh, maybe it's not a bad decision at all to take advantage of. You can get something cheaper. I try, I'm rattling my brain trying to remember what it was. I think it was my mobile phone, maybe. I've always had a SIM card separate to, um, to the phone. So I buy the phone myself. I don't get it through a contract because if you crunch the numbers, it tends to be really expensive to do it that way around. But a lot of people tend to not be able to afford putting up that, you know, lump sum to buy the phone in the first place. So to get you on the contract, you actually end up spending more money that way. Um, yeah, and I think they offered some sort of like, you know, you can pay, pay in monthly installments and it would actually work out to be cheaper. But I just decided not to. I just didn't like the idea of it because I always, I always look at those schemes like in a negative light. And so... I think although it might have been a rational better decision, I just kind of went with my gut and was like, I think I'd rather not, you know, even though I know I can make these payments, um, I think I'd rather just not. Let's get some uh, black concrete in here.
Yeah, you see there. I, it, I've tested this stuff so much, you don't actually really ever see it. I think what I'll do though is knock it back a little bit. Hey, excellent at Taco Bell. Do you want anything? Says Goopy. I, I really want to uh, eat at Taco Bell. It's just like one of those American. I know it's a fast food thing, but it's just one of those American brands that people talk about and kind of sounds interesting. It's weird. Like when I when I go to America, one of the things I want to do is you know try out all the cuisine. Of course I would, but a lot of it is fast food. You know, and fast food isn't often the healthiest choice, yet I still want to uh, try the Taco Bells and these other ones that I've heard about too. I'm trying to think of some names now. Is it Applebee's? There's another chain over there that sounds kind of interesting. Right, enough of this concrete placing. I, I just want to do a little bit of it as we go around each side here, but really we should focus on what we're here to do, which is knock out torches, and then make sure this stuff is uh, properly lit up. Which it does appear to be for this part. Ah, you see there's a couple of spots here where all you got to do is something like that. Uh, maybe down at this level too. James Drew, 27, 75 months of support. Evil X, hanging out in the chat. Thank you so much, my dude. Appreciate it. Timo Timido says, how's life changed since Brexit? Um, nothing, nothing like really that noticeable, to be fair. Although, I think if you travel more, you'll probably notice it. it I don't know. Um... A lot of the economic downturn gets blamed on, on Brexit and stuff, but it's just, I don't know. It's hard to measure those sorts of things, right? Uh, those offers might attract more people, so more sales for the company, so should the deals not always be worth it? If you're talking about from the company perspective, well... I don't really think much from their perspective. I think from our perspective and like, you know, uh, what's good for consumers, you know, you're a consumer, consume, consume right now. Put something in your mouth, consume. Um, ugh, almost fell off. That, ter that term's always a bit like, I don't know, a bit, a bit. Like, is it very, like, sort of, uh, I don't know, like, almost capitalist and anti-capitalist at the same time? Like, when you talk about consumer rights? But it, it's sort of like, that's, that's people, but then it's, like, people through the lens of, like, consumption. Which is, you know, a very capitalist-driven thing. Consumes pasta salad. I thought that said pasta pizza, and I was like, what? Read it again, it's like, oh, okay. Okay, right, yeah. Got a spot. If you spot a torch, be sure to let me know. We don't want any torch interference with this important job. Speaking of which, I'm going to get in here. Now let's do it like that. Oh, yeah, just do that. Easy. Easy. Uh, there are torches sort of below me here, so... Seven? Oh, I guess it... Yeah, I guess it's on the same block. I think we've done the bit above. You know what? I keep forgetting we've got this. Right, so yeah, all, all of that one was done, by the looks of it. And I think we're actually just at the end of this. Okay. So now we need to drop down to there. So let's drop down and knock out that torch. Have you heard of chips and pizza? Now get ready for chips on pizza. Ah, uh, don't know, don't know about chips on pizza. That sounds a bit, a bit stodgy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go for that. Not for chips on pizza. I 
I was almost considering ordering a takeaway today. Because my plans changed. I'm gonna watch a movie later. I think I uh I think I'm gonna have a Halo top. Indulge with that, but uh no takeaway. Keeping it good for the next couple of months while I do the bulking thing. I uh I don't really see like any weight going on myself at the moment. I didn't weigh myself before I started bulking, but uh like just physically what is this like week three maybe? Let's have a look. Uh yeah. Oh god. Now now I'm trying to I'm looking at a calendar and I'm like trying to remember the days and it's like oh Yeah, th I finished my third week. But anyway, like I'm pretty sure like when you have a takeaway you're gonna You're getting way more calories than you need, so I'm gonna avoid them. I want I wanna count everything while I'm doing this and do it right, you know? It's sort of my uh, attitude. Is it really a pizza if it doesn't have pineapple, says Blackjack? Oh, we're just trying to just trying to start that old discussion, are ya? Yeah. I want to try a pizza with kiwi on. I've been doing 100 push-ups a day for almost a month, says Talbot. Awesome, man. Keep at it. Keep at it. I wish there was a more healthy restaurant and takeaway options, says Jeff Pluckley. Um, well, you know, there might be if you've got something like a Wagamama. Um, Nando's seems to be pretty good in my opinion. Also depends on what country you're in. Like, uh, in America there's so much more sugar in the diet. I imagine that, like, kind of like comes through at multiple levels, you know? But hey, the other thing is, if you're looking, if you're looking to eat healthy, you know, learning to cook with fresh fruit and vegetables and all that kind of stuff—that's a great way to healthy up your diet, I guess. Right? Are there any torches? I don't think there are any torches. So all of this is pretty good. There are a couple of spots here. I figured, let's throw in. See, I could probably get away with that over here. That I will. If I ever like, if I ever just start noticing that bits of it are not to my liking, right? I can always come over here and change it. So, so yeah, keeping that in mind, these are very small parts of a big picture, and uh, it might just be worth not worrying about it too much, because it makes bits like this like a heck of a lot easier. Uh, let's go. Yeah, put one there. <clears throat> right, did that one. I think we did all the little bits down here with this rib. Oh, no, 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 there's still more. There we go. Guess we're doing this bit too now. With our super spooky music. Well, I think I'm going to switch to standing. Stella Gaming says, fun fact, we can't get fresh fruit or veg here where I live as it goes rotten in a day or so. So we can always go with snap fresh frozen fruit and veg. Yeah, I don't know too much about frozen fruit and veg and like how it compares to unfrozen and fresh. I do cook with frozen stuff for convenience and they, they always just feel so different like um, you get a bag of mixed vegetables with like broccoli and carrots and cauliflower and it's never quite the same as fresh but I don't know like how how much of a difference there is. Curls seems to think that frozen veg is pretty healthy and that's good to hear. It compares very well for nutrition. All right, the way they advertise it, it does make it does make it feel like you know they kind of emphasise the fact that it will be pretty much like fresh when you defrost. That's really good to hear because uh, I'm I'm a fan of that, especially with fruit. Like 
Oh yeah, I was going to make some protein fluff today, maybe. Which, uh, some frozen... Frozen raspberries. Mix that up with some whey protein and a little bit of milk. And it turns into this, uh... Big old bowl of what looks like some... Calorie-rich, monstrous dessert. <laughs> and it's not. It's super light and it, like... It fills you up like crazy. Uh, this one time... I made a pudding with it. And... Um, didn't want it to go to waste, so I like ate all of the leftover pudding that no one else wanted. And then I had to walk home, and I was so uncomfortable, I was so bloated. I'd eaten so much of it, and yet it was like, not a lot of calories. Alright, so down here, the whole, the whole placing of, uh, the concrete starts to get real tricky. So I think I'll focus on just making sure this stuff is kind of like plastered a bit. And then we'll hop over to the other side by the looks of it. Yeah, I didn't even get around to putting any of this stuff down. It's all lit by torches at the moment. <clears throat> I think I'll put another big chunk of it just over here. Yeah, that'll do. <clears throat> yeah, my voice has struggled a little bit today. It, it tends to when I stream first thing in the morning anyway. So no surprise there. Do you know what? When I go from standing to sitting, I immediately, like, my bladder's like, time to go to the toilet. So, uh, I'll be right back, peeps. Don't go anywhere. I won't be long. I just noticed that there are 1,500 peeps tuning in to watch. Thank you everyone for coming by. Be sure to hit that follow button if you enjoy the stream. You know, these morning streams, they always uh, seem to attract more viewers. I think I think it's either because I, I just... Maybe you watch Hermitcraft and you know that like X does the morning things or whatever. But like, it's either that or maybe just other people aren't live at this kind of time. Probably more likely, isn't it? But uh, I appreciate y'all coming by and hanging out with with me. Four girl wants to see a loo emote because <laughs> I'm popping to the loo. Uh, I who did the last emotes that I got? I can't remember where we're at with emotes. Curls is excluding herself from that request. <laughs> Yeah, who, who's the we? Who's the we in that statement, Forgill? Okay, talking about loos and wees. Yeah, oh, there's a pun somewhere in there. Who's the we in that statement, eh? Is it just you? I think it might just be you. I get a lot of comments like that. Uh, they kind of annoy me. When uh, people talk in terms of like... Here's my emotions, and here's me projecting them to everyone. You know, uh, everyone hates this new Minecraft update. Kind of comment I might see in uh, in my, you know, snapshot videos or something. It's just like, please stop doing that, internet. <laughs> please stop talking about like your feelings as if it's everyone. It just, I don't know, it just seems a bit ugly. Uh, hmm. 
yeah, actually, this is kind of weird, this bit. I don't know quite how to handle this. I will save it for another time, though. As when I'm streaming, I'm talking at the same time and usually not making uh, the best decisions. So, down on this floor, again, where putting in all the black concrete is going to be challenging. Let's knock out a torch. Throw this stuff around. Like, why is that there? Why did I ever think that was a good idea? Oh yeah, I should use this thing a bit more as well, right? So, just double check what we've just done, which is this one here. It's good all the way. All of this looks good. Uh, where's all of that stuff? That's just behind it all, isn't it? Where am I? I'm there. Okay. Got my bearings. I think we're going up here. And that should take care of that bit, I imagine. Yeah, I can see that the torch nearby is affecting this. And there's one over here. But that means that all of this is good now. Sweet. On to the next one. There's another sneaky torch. Uh, Curls of Doom says, Echo Chambers can create this kind of everyone thinks this way pattern. They can, they can. It just feels like, I don't know, it just feels like such a... Such an emotional expression, the way I see it put out there a lot of the time. I, I think it's just really important to like realise what you're saying sometimes. Like You're informing yourself as well as putting this opinion out into the world, right? If, if you think about the world that way... As if this thing that you're feeling is what everyone else is feeling. It, it like it's used in arguments as well. Um, kind of a hard thing to articulate. It just seems like problematic to me to think in those kind of terms because they're just not they're not really grounded in reality. Like reality is just full of <gasps> so many uh, people and variables and tastes and whatnot, you know. Why talk in these terms of absolute? Do you notice a change in gameplay with a change of spawn conditions? Not massively, but um, yeah, definitely feels a bit more peaceful in general. Which is good. Feels like, uh, you know, you light up an area and, and then you're alright. Where's my glow lichen? So barely put any over on this side, so we'll put a few bits as we go around. But uh, yeah, these torches are going to be in the way. Right, that's the bottom bit done. I guess we're going in reverse on this one. Isn't there a band called Falling in Reverse or a song? I feel like I keep hearing that mentioned. And like, from the first time I heard it, I was just like, I don't know, like, I can't scoff on demand, but it gave me a bit of a <laughs> kind of reaction. <laughs> Like, falling in reverse. Oh man, I feel like there's some analogies here I could uh, come up with for it. Emo metal band. I, I knew it! I knew it would be something like emo or like, trying to be like emotionally powerful. Oh, I'm, I'm falling but in reverse. Oh, you are, so, oh, in reverse. You know what I mean? Like... It's like a pun, or like a bit of wit that is just not witty at all. I just, I don't know, I've heard, I keep hearing this falling in reverse thing and I'm like, falling in reverse? Just what, like going upwards? <laughs> How do you fall in reverse as ghostly, Lily? It's just, it's just one of those like, I don't know, it just sounds like, Trying to trying to be clever, but it's very plain. It's just like this, but backwards. Oh, see what we did there? Oh, 
Didn't think about that, did you? The old the old fall, but in reverse. Ah. Oh, what is that? Like lying on the ground and then suddenly going whoop. <laughs> that would be pretty cool if you could uh, leverage your body like that. But uh, that's that's pretty pretty tricky, that one. And there's a few other things I've heard like that along along the way. I think rap lyrics would probably on occasion be like pretty fertile ground for finding some sort of smelly analogies like that, you know, because it's like um, you know, they're always, always trying to be clever with the the wordplay, and, and sometimes it's just a little too. Uh, little too obvious. Like, I think Lord Finesse was one of those. Back in... I really like his music and his style and everything, but then, after a while I kind of noticed it's all about, like, going I've... I'm something this, like, something that. And always just making these references, and uh... Oh, some of them were just so cheesy when you, like, thought about them. Oh, man, I wish I could remember it. It's something about, like, being... <laughs> yeah, I oh man, I, I I wish I could remember, but I can't. He's got these lyrics about just like just they're so pun oriented oriented. I've got more this than that and no, I don't know, it won't come to mind. Maybe it'll come to mind in a bit. I think one of the lines was, I get more skins than a dermatologist or something like that. And I was just like, what? <laughs> Come on. That's so cheesy. I mean, at the, at the time, though, it was probably like pretty radical to hear like someone putting together all those kind of things. But it, I don't, don't think it's aged the best, but like the, the music's great. It's fun. Oh, what was the other one about? There's one about a tracking device. My, I don't know. My my rhymes are mad nice. I'm on you like a tracking device. It's just like what? <laughs> oh, I'm a lyrical, spiritual, individual miracle, says Goopy. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the more like Eminem inspired uh, kind of. Super fast, throwing together all the clever words. That's definitely a kind of similar thing. Yeah. Uh, Lord Finesse is not of that era. Lord Finesse is, uh, you know, early 90s. And was like a, a big deal, a big deal at the time, coming along with that sound and putting together those kind of rhymes. Like, I'm not knocking it. I think it's great. But it's admittedly just kind of like dated and cheesy now. Because, you know, the first person to, like, break out of the box and do stuff like that is, uh, is onto something, right? It just, it develops, it changes with time. You know, you probably go back and listen to, like, some rappers or whatever you listen to today, and some of what they're doing will probably just sound a bit off, you know, compared to what comes along in the future. Is Lord Finesse rap? Absolutely. I don't know what else. I mean, unless you want to say, like, rap and hip-hop need to be separate, then... I mean, but he's a rapper. Like, of course it's rap. I've not heard about him. I should really catch up with my rap knowledge, says Crusady Boy. Rap's, rap's been going around for a long time now, so there's, like, a heck of a lot of it to learn about. Um, but if you're into, like, classic early 90s stuff, his record, The Awakening, is a really good listen. And if you're a fan of, I think, is it Mac Miller? Like, some people have, like, reused his beats from the modern era, too. Um, I don't think he's got, like, a good rapport with a lot of younger artists because of them reusing his beats and he not, like, being particularly happy about that. Which I personally, I think that's the wrong attitude to have considering that hip-hop is kind of, like, the reusing of beats is kind of foundational. I don't think it should be, like, who was first to reuse some sample from the 70s and make a cool new hip hop song of it? It should just be like, hey, if someone wants to come along and like use that again, why not?
What is this like detailed answer to a question in chat? <laughs> I don't know what the uh, first question was there or whatever. What is the name of that documentary that tells like the beginning of hip hop that you talked about before? Um, there are several, and it, it, I, I wish I could tell you because I can't remember the names of them. They're, some of them are on Netflix now. I mean, you just have to do some digging around. Like maybe just type into a search engine. What are some good? What are some good? documentaries on the origins of hip hop or whatever because uh the the one really fascinating one that wasn't primarily related to it was about the uh the blackouts in new york and this is like right before africa bombarda and um oh god there were three of them right there were three different djs in these local areas and they were like the, the beginning of the whole story and right before it happened there was this blackout and there was like looting and writing and it's sort of supposed that how some of these people first got their hands on instruments if you want to call like the turntable an instrument and stuff is from those blackouts where these places got looted and then impoverished communities had a new type of access to music which was you know turntables and whatnot and then they started remixing and rapping and creating with like these basic tools that they got and then you know so you got this like early period of hip-hop where it's like uh more of a a tradition and a culture and there's these like five different disciplines and all this sort of stuff like uh, break, break dancing was a part of it too. You had your b-boys and all this kind of stuff, and then eventually, like it ends up uh, on vinyl through Rapper's Delight. And apparently, there is a there's a oh who is it? There's an English musician who sort of did a rap, and it, like it, the idea is that these things are just probably completely uh, unconnected and just you know a coincidence but there was a, a white artist in England who probably had no connection to what was happening in America with hip hop but did a sort of rap on a record the same year before Rapper's Delight came out I can't remember Ian I think might be Ian something might be the name I heard that recently thought that was interesting Blondie no 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 Um, yeah, so then, so then, like, you know, hip hop gets its first single, starts to become commercialized, which the original people were kind of against. Then you got like the 80s, which has this just kind of classic, slightly goofy, slightly cheesy, but like really fun, upbeat kind of vibe to it. And uh, that's a really nice period of hip-hop music. But it's just at the end of the 80s that things start to get interesting. That's when like the lyricism uh, starts to evolve uh, with like Rakim and Eric B and Big Daddy Kane. And they are like in the 80s, at the end of the 80s, you can find the beginning of like the big boom of the 90s with... Um, you know, all your mega stars like Tupac and Dr. Dre and all of that stuff that just took it like global, basically. You can find the origins of it there. And it's super interesting to listen to because you can listen to an evolution through several different records of like style and sound. Um, and you can just hear, you know, it all, it all changing and uh, through the 90s. So that early, early 90s period for me is like, super fascinating and we uh that's why we started talking about lord finesse i guess because he was from that particular era sumer is 100 years old and he's experienced it all I mean, you don't have to be 100 years old to experience all the hip-hop but uh i mean i haven't experienced it all i'm not 100 years old 
I've, I've gone pretty deep on the 90s hip hop and the early hip hop stuff, right? But not so much the 80s, but like uh, that little period in the beginning of the 90s. It's kind of like uh, a favorite of mine, and I've explored it somewhat extensively. Uh, Ian Robbins, Ian. Ian Robbins Jury, isn't it just Ian Jury? I think that's the guy. Faith and I think you've got it. I think you've got it. Put an extra one back there. Right, let's uh, keep on keeping on with this. Just do that there. Mm-hmm. Fill in all of that. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do this. Put that over the top. It's so black, like you barely even notice when you put like a, a block in front of it. It's crazy. Uh, that's the wrong block to go there. Hey! 15 minutes ago, Doofus230 for 8 months. Almost a Twitch baby. Thank you, my dude. I'm so sorry. I uh, forgot to look over at the other screen for uh, a moment. Uh... Okay, so Becca says, I think the original question in the thread you were looking at was this. So Jamin, X, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Yesterday, Marvel posted a picture of two gay superheroes kissing. The comments were very, very negative. Why do you think the homophobics are always so explicit about their feelings against the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I think... Hmm... I mean I think it's I think it's a case of like when when corporatism starts getting involved in social related issues um things get like kind of contentious and narrativized right I mean like if it offends you seeing two gay superheroes kiss that's on you really like come on that's not a problem I think, I think um, it's it's like how the corporations are involved that then it kind of like gets people riled up as if they think there's like an agenda or or something like that. Look, the the way I see it is, this is about you know who you are as a person and how you feel, and some people born feeling one way, other people are born feeling another way, and. Those people, you know, want to be able to see themselves in different parts of society, like movies and culture. And um, now that, you know, as society slowly gets more and more open and more tolerant of these things, those people that exist in those sorts of spaces then get to partake in making those decisions and characters become part of that. So... Curio Mana says virtual signaling. I'm not sure if it is virtual signaling. Vir virtue signaling. Um, you don't sort of know what's going on behind the scenes, right? But, like, there's no reason that we can't have, like, gay superheroes. There just isn't, because gay people exist. And why can't they be a part of that? Like, there isn't really an answer for that. So I think if someone gets all riled up, and angry at seeing that poster, like, you know, that's homophobia, that's bigotry. Then there's this other layer, I think, that is more problematic, that I think maybe pulls in people who aren't actually that homophobic or whatever, which is like, when you add in the sort of layer of corporatism, it looks more agendered, not gendered, like part of an agenda. I, I see those sorts of comments on that stuff, and... That stuff I can I can kind of like see a little bit more like but I thought about this a lot um, 
lately about uh, this concept of representation and how uh, just historically through who has had power and wealth and the ability to create culture and media that everyone consumes that certain demographics just aren't visible but yet they're part of our society right um one one like moment that i seem to remember quite well that made this obvious to me was just casually watching a movie from the 90s and then i was just like everyone's white like literally everyone in this movie is wealthy and white and like there are just like you go out and walk the streets and it's just not like that like where are all the other people you know um and so like you you can see like how a change needs to be made there that hang on a minute like you can literally just go back in time and the more movies you watch from the 90s and 80s the more the demographic on screen shifts right even even sometimes the roles like like who's who in the movie too um you can see it shift in different directions as well like in stranger things i've noticed that there are uh a lot of like black police officers and i feel like this is a show about the 80s but if it were made in the 80s um they probably wouldn't have been black right they wouldn't have been casted that way by the production team or whatever just just if you went back and like looked at other shows from that era Whereas now they are. However, it's like... I don't know if that's historically accurate or not. But then again, I don't really care. Um, it's like that Bridgerton show. If they want to make a movie about an era that like had didn't have black people in those positions yet. They're casted in the show and they're included and whatnot. That's perfectly fine. I just think like, you know, there's historical context there. It's not rewriting history, but um, th that's some of the arguments these people make. And I just feel like the whole the whole thing is kind of like messy. And a lot of interpolation of opposites pulling in different directions. But like, I think if you just, if you're educated, if you understand these things, then you'll see where the problems are and like how these are probably more so solutions. Didn't they make Police Academy with Eddie Murphy in the early 90s, late 80s, says Kels of Doom. Yeah, there were loads of... There was what, the buddy cop um, of... What was it? Lethal Weapon as well. Um, there were, like, you know... I'm not saying there wasn't any, but, like, it was just far more common to find, right? It just feels like every show you watch today, there is just a mix of people in it. And it's just like real life, where there's a mix of people. The further back in time you go, though, it's like more and more um, like this occasional sort of like whitewashed movie or whatever where there's no one of color in sight. And, you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting it's like particularly intentional or malicious or anything like that. Just it's very noticeable, those those subtle shifts. Um, we got MLDKNR1 here for 12 months and Shawnee YYX here for 40 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hmm. Should they remake The Sound of Music, says, uh, Actual Genius. Um, if that's related to our current discussion, like remake and recast as well with other um you know groups involved or whatever like i always just feel like all you need is the context of it i have no problem with them remaking a movie with uh, a different cast for whatever reason it's just i don't think erasing history is a good idea um i, I don't like well i was about to say something that is not actually true but um the tearing down of like statues of old slave masters or whatever was a, a thing a while back but there's a moment of it over here in the uk some people reacted by um uh vandalizing statues of churchill i i don't particularly know like i don't have an answer for how to handle that but i think it's really important not to uh just get rid of history if it's uncomfortable i really feel like you have to 
teach, uh, like, you know, the context and the understanding. And it's about giving people uh, an education on the past and what was wrong about it, etc. As opposed to hiding it away. Something about hiding it away really scares me. Um, Curls, you, the discussion we had the other day, I won't mention about what, but all of a sudden that popped into my head, like, uh, to compare, let's say, two neighbouring countries, like, that's, um, yeah, like, why we shouldn't hide, uh, history, you know, it's, it's, we need to learn from history. Uh, Rallyan says, getting rid of statues that celebrate slave owners is not the same as hiding history. Right, um, I guess, I guess I'm, uh, what I'm saying is, like, let's not, let's not rule out that removing this stuff is the best course of, um, oh wait, what am I trying to say? Hmm. Let me think about what you said again. Getting rid of statues that celebrate slave owners is not the same as hiding history yeah it might not be I guess I guess what I think is is maybe that like rather than these statues be a celebration maybe they should be a reminder right like f find a way to add context to what's there it, it, it to me it's like hmm maybe it's not the worst thing ever I don't know it's like if you remove these things do they I don't know. Do they do they lose their ability to remind you of the past? It's an interesting discussion. Maybe I'm not so settled on uh, how it should play out or what way it should be handled. But I guess maybe one of the problems is uh, we have such a, like a reactionary, heated way of discussing things that sometimes it's a little uh, difficult to like hear through all the noise, right? You know. All that stuff about tearing down statues when it happened was mobs of people shouting at each other and protests and you know where's where's the space to like really think these ideas through? That's what you want to be able to do. Maybe um, maybe tearing them down isn't you know hiding history. In my mind, it would be like this thing is here; it exists. Um, add context to it would be my proposed solution. Maybe you go visit the statue and then there's also like some additional information about like maybe how our opinions have changed over time or or etc etc. Yeah, I, I I guess I therefore worry that if we just tear these things down, we might forget about what they represent. Okay, let's uh, go up here. Why are we all so odd, says Kenny Coy. Are we all odd? Maybe we're more familiar to one another, similar to one another than we realise. I don't, I don't know quite what that means. Lest we forget, says AC in Tuck. Yeah, something like that. Humans have done horrible, horrible things in the past. Really, we'd have to tear down nearly every statue ever, says the Thinky. Um, hmm. Don't know quite what to say in response to that. Um, it's certainly possible that there are things that seem innocent now that will uh, one day not see the same, perhaps. Let's do that. There we go. I mean, the weird thing about, like, the human experience or society is that, like, a lot of stuff, like, it, it starts in a in the worst place, right? Like, life is tough. Conditions are harsh. Um, to come out of that, like, you know, we, we talk a lot about, like, big societal issues of inequality and stuff. If you think about it through that kind of lens... We, we like you you start in almost like the worst place possible right like mother nature is brutal and things are rough and once you start to like 
develop on the path of uh, to where we are today, you know, developing tools or I don't know, certain systems between people that start to create additional wealth and security and you know, survival becomes less of a struggle. Like, that path starts from a really bad place. And so the fact that we have all these problems and issues and whatnot, it's almost like inevitable that we would. Like, we're, we're always fighting um, for what's right and trying to improve. Uh, sometimes it just seems to me like do we, do we, like, acknowledge at any point that the starting conditions are always really, really terrible for any of this stuff? Well, maybe it's not. Maybe maybe the way we treat each other is the real problem. Maybe it's not the environment of Mother Nature and all of that. Maybe it's how we uh, are not kind enough to one another, right? Something, something about, like, the surplus of wealth the access to food, technology, medicine and whatnot has brought out our kindness perhaps, like has made it easier to be kind and civil and then when all of that goes away and things collapse people are more brutal. You know, maybe it's not the environment, maybe it's us. It seems like you like psychology and philosophy a lot, absolutely. That stuff fascinates me. Anyway, I was randomly saying stuff now. <laughs> At this point. Starting conditions of the internet and social media are also pretty terrible. I hope humans are going to figure this out soon. We need to create like a, a course. You know. Um, how to use the internet. There needs to be a course on that. Becca says, isn't that what you normally do, X? Yeah, but some, like, I tend to, like, if I go on a waffle, the idea is that it's something that's been mulling over in my head a bit recently, and then I just sort of, like, let it out, and so it feels a bit more well thought out and reasonable. Whereas, when we start going into stuff that I haven't thought about in ages, I, like, lose track of all the different ideas I've heard about it and stuff. Wow, there's quite a bit to do here. Um, let's go to the next one. Only got one ender pole left, though. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Enough of the noises. I should have a whole bunch of pearls somewhere here. I came and dumped a whole bunch. Hmm, I thought I did anyway. Right. Uh, that, and then in here there'll be some. Yep. Also, while I'm here... Oh, do you know what? Those scaffolding that I tore down, they're pretty useful. Maybe in your new sorter, says Forgill. Nah, I haven't even set that thing up yet. Uh, I mean, uh, it would be set up, but I had to finish all of this. Okay, let's uh, eat some food and go back into it. Do you watch Philosophy Tube? I, uh, I do not. Everstu says X, have your thoughts on the term LGBT, LGBTQ ally changed at all over the years? Not really, I'm still I'm still very much in the camp of preferring to like express things through my own words. I'm not a flag waver. I mean it's not just like an LGBTQ thing. Like when do I ever wave flags about anything, right? It's just not the way my uh, brain works. Much rather because I always I always like try to think about how someone who doesn't get it or doesn't see it and like what would you say to them what would you like what are the, what are the kind of things that um, you can say to someone who doesn't understand this stuff that can maybe like nudge them in the right direction and the, the, the thing that I seem to come back to over and over again is like people don't like to be told they're wrong um, they don't like to be shouted and yelled at like you, you kind of have to like in a, in a 
what was it like kill them with kindness you, you need to actually like try and understand how someone who's bigoted or homophobic or, or whatever is seeing the world and, and thinking of them more as a human and less of just like someone who's got it wrong and to me like some of the things that become really obvious are like information what kind of information are you exposed to um, if you actually listen to people who have these opinions you realize that they're like there's a different information diet a different exposure to ideas and uh, and so I would prefer to like rather than wave a flag about something you know a flag can be like flown in someone's face or waved in someone's face whereas talking about ideas and stuff is an opportunity to uh, perhaps make them realize that like they don't know what these ideas are they you know so when when someone else sees a flag being waved um, you know think of it like war right you know you're a soldier you're heading for a field someone's waving a flag off, off in the distance if it's the, the flag of your country it's like oh goodness me we found we found our troops right let's you know happily head over there if it's the flag of the enemy it's like oh no that's bad right so these people have a different idea of what waving that flag means so in my mind it's better to uh, have have the good ideas be able to express them you know sort of openly and yeah just think about things that way as opposed to just waving a flag at someone I, I just don't feel like it achieves much I, if I see a flag being waved that that's not the thing that convinces me right um, but that you know I think both things have their place I'm not saying that people shouldn't wave flags because at the same time let's say we compare this to like mental health discussion it's really good and important to see people talk about mental health that's more of us come to terms with yeah we have both physical health and mental health and if you're struggling um, you need to be able to talk about it and we need to foster a society for that so like I'm just I'm just seeing what works for me like I'm, I'm the sort of person that probably shouldn't wave a flag and then hopefully be able to talk about an issue and then other people need to wave flags so there's visibility right are you saying that bigots are illogical so you're starting with the left for the and then it cuts off I'm not saying that bigots are illogical I don't, I don't I've, I've sort of grown a bit of distaste for using logics and facts right logic and facts increasingly seem to uh, be more of like a confirmational thing like actual logic is doesn't really intersect very well with emotions and these big picture ideas and you can kind of like draw lines of logic for like all sorts of different thinking again if you spend a bit of time thinking about how people with different opinions and stuff see the world you can kind of see like how you could make logical arguments for stuff you don't even agree with right so I'd argue you need to look for like kindness and compassion it's not about hitting some logical resonance on how we should treat one another it's like just just so seek for the kindness and the understanding just be to more tolerant of like the fact that people can be born feeling different to you and whatnot Logic and facts are used by people who want to make a point instead of people who know what they are actually talking about nowadays, says Leska. I understand what you're saying. It really does feel like, um, yeah, a lot of people using the whole logic and facts. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It like people who really know what they're talking about and have deeply researched stuff tend to just talk about topics and things in a way where they don't even need to go near something like logics and facts like it's they understand it on a different level uh, I think what I need to be using is this and I'm not I've like dropped out of the habit 
And I think we might, yeah, look, like one or two little spots there. And the occasional stone block that I've apparently missed. So I think we're looking at pillaring up down there and then we will, uh, my work will be done. Ow! My shins. Anyway, play a little game with yourself. That sounds... <laughs> ah! let's, let's, let's start again. Here's a little idea for you. Uh, a couple of ideas for you. Right? When you're engaging with those ideas, however you do it, uh, always try and perhaps imagine arguing the other side and giving them the best argument possible. Right? You know, you're not going to argue poorly for them. And the other thing is just when you hear those lines of logic and facts, really think them through a little bit and, and see how uh, maybe they could be applied to the thing you don't think is logical or whatnot. And, and maybe, like me, you'll see that sometimes these things are not really actually that logical. They just sort of sound it. Uh, maybe I should start like trying to gather some examples. Because, you know, I just think about this stuff and then that's it. Right, that red block there is because it's stone, but I don't think I'm going to... Well, I can fix it while I'm here. Or can I? I don't think I'm going to bother fixing it. It'll be barely noticeable. Right, let's turn off that and that. Okay. Did someone say Devil's Advocate says Jig Rabble? Yeah, basically Devil's Advocate, but also like um, not just like arguing the other side for the sake of it, you know. Still, still manning it, trying to see the best possible, you know, version of it, and and then also when you hear the facts and logic thing, just kind of really think through how that logic works and if it can be applied to different situations. This is just like, this place is amazing right now. If you can't tell, that's the end of the stream, by the way. So, massive thanks to everyone for subscribing, resubscribing. Be sure to hit the follow button before you head out of here. Likely, I'll be streaming tomorrow evening, maybe doing Hermits Helping Hermits. So, uh, we've got that to look for. But that's it from me. Big thanks to everyone who subscribed, resubscribed, donated, and cheered. As always, I appreciate your support. Thank you to the mods, the patrons, and the peeps gifting the subs. And I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.